I'm Matthew Burchette, and this is Behind the Wings, and bam, that is a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Okay, all goofiness aside, because we always have to have some of that in an episode of Behind the Wings, I'm actually standing in front of our Boeing Blue Sky Aviation Gallery, which is actually phase one of Wings Over the Rockies' much larger exploration of flight campus here on Centennial Airport. That's pretty exciting. Speaking of flying, this episode is not about Blue Sky, it's about that little guy, the Cessna 172 Skyhawk, and that baby looks like she needs a pilot. Luckily, you got me. Okay, I'm not a pilot, but I know where to find one. Now I say this a lot, but how cool is this? You guys are getting a really inside look at this thing. Not everyone gets to do that. Bam! 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 In 1911, the aviation bug bit Clyde Cessna hard, and he ended up building one of the first monoplanes west of the Mississippi. He taught himself to fly it less than a decade after the Wright brothers' first flight. After years of trial and error, Cessna moved to Wichita, Kansas and started his own company, the Cessna Aircraft Company in 1927. Over time, the Cessna Aircraft Company designed and built hundreds of thousands of aircraft for commercial, general, and military aviation, but none more popular than the little 172. The first Cessna 172 went on sale in 1956, and the Cessna Aircraft Company continued to refine the design. Since its first flight in 1955, Cessna has sold more than 44,000 172s, making it the single most widely produced aircraft in history. Let's catch up with a current 172 pilot who can show us this innovation firsthand. So we're here with Brooks Dickerson, who's a student in Metropolitan State University of Denver, um, and you are part of their aerobatic team, is that correct? Yes, sir, I am. So what's it like to be a part of the aerobatic team? I mean, what are you flying for those guys? So the aerobatic team, uh, we actually have a team of about 20 members now at uh, school, and we go out and fly a series of aerobatic maneuvers in front of three judges, sometimes four, and then that uh, gets scored against the other schools, and we uh, compete in That's that in that way. Cool. So it's a, it's a really neat collegiate program to be a part of. All right, so Brooks, I know that this thing has got like a wingspan of like 32 feet or something 36. like 36 feet, see? 36 That's feet. why you're the expert. <laughs> um, but what is this doohickey? So this thing here is something that you actually are going to see on almost every single airplane that's, that has ever been uh, produced. It's what's called a pitot tube. And okay. what the, this does is gives the pilot an accurate indication of air, airspeed. So that's how fast the airplane's moving through, through the air. So at our museum, we have mostly military aircraft. Right. A lot of the pitot tubes are like way yeah. out in front. So sure. it's kind of odd, I guess, to see it here, but it makes perfect sense. I mean, you kind of need clean air. Right, you, you're gonna need clear, clean air. And you know, on something, like, let's say, take the F-4, for example, you know, you got a big old pitot tube right on the front. Right. right. On the F-4, you don't have a uh, prop out front that's polluting the air and uh, turning turn it, it up. Now, when I was messing around earlier, I saw something on the wingtip of this thing that I want to show you and ask you about because it, it makes no sense to me. So here we are in a wildly sophisticated airplane, yet we got a little tiny piece of plexiglass hanging out here. What the heck is that thing? What that does is it indicates to the pilot that our navigation lights are working. If they, okay. they are, we should see one red, red light on our left side and one green light on the right, right side. Just like a boat? Exactly. Okay. Just like a boat. Now, I'm, I got it. I got it. All right, so this guy's the elevator, controls the pitch of the aircraft, right. otherwise up and down. Sure. Um, but what are these little doohickey thingies? So these little things here, and you can see them that they're also on the ailerons. On an all-metal airplane like this, 
These are what's called static wakes. What these do is as the airplane moves through the air, it causes a static bit buildup, sim similar to if you are walking across carpet in socks, okay. right? So what this does is discharges the static back into the air so it doesn't interfere oh, with your radios really or navigation. Cool. Well, you know, that's probably a good thing because this has not got what they call a steam gauge cockpit. Correct. This right. thing is like fully glass. Absolutely. Let's go yeah. check that out. Sure. All right, so this does not look like your standard 172 cockpit. What is going on with all this glass? So what we're looking at here is the state-of-the-art av avionics package known as the Garmin G1000 NXI. Now that's the top of the line, most modern avionics that you can equip in a same no single kidding. engine a airplane here. So basically what a glass cockpit does and what the NXI has done, done here is taken all of our steam gate gauges and put them in an easier to, to read compact foot format here on this screen here. So the, the, the pilot no longer has to scan too far around. He can scan his instruments right, right here. Now, the engine that, that's sitting in front of us is a 155 horsepower turbo diesel in, engine. So this airplane is fueled by Jet A, which is actually about a dollar and a half cheaper per gallon Ooh, than, than, than Avgas. Okay, I can start to see the exactly. allure. This airplane, we're, we're, we're showing about a, a, a max speed of about 143 miles an hour. So that's, okay. that's you know, say 143 miles an hour in a straight line, that'll get you to your destination a lot yeah, faster no than uh, driving, right? Let's, uh, let's take this baby out. You cool with that? Absolutely. I didn't think you'd say no. <laughs> you can't just be in the plane, you gotta fly the plane. So most of the airplanes that you're going to see for training out here today are Cessna 172s. They are just good, honest planes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. This thing is fun. So, Matt, whenever you're ready, okay. let's put your, your hands off, off on the yoke. Now, what we really like to, to, to do here is I'm, I'm a big fan of not over controlling the, the, the airplane. Right. You got both hands up here. Oftentimes, you're going to be real, you know, heavy, 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 heavy on, on the control. So I really like, like to just kind of fly with one, one hand. In your, your, your case, you're going to fly with your right hand, so you got your left hand, the, the, the throttle here. Yeah, you do not have to have a lot of... There's not a lot of force on it. it it's what, 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 what I like to tell folks is the airplane's going to want to continue to, to fly. Your only job is the, the, the pilot is to manipulate it. There's a lot of misconceptions that you have in to try to you know, keep the airplane in, 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 in the air. And specifically with the 172 especially, that is not the case. That was the idea behind the Cessna 172 is a, a easy, easy flying, easy operating tra trainer. And Cessna hit it right on the, 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 the yeah, head. Yeah, no kidding. This thing is the most su 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 successful airplane sales-wise and manufacturing-wise that had been built. And there's still, flight schools are still operating these th th today. Now, if you can, can kind of see the smoky outline of down, downtown there, right. why don't you give us a slight right turn, head right towards downtown, and we, we, we can get a nice uh, circling view of it. We just got back from our super cool flight with Brooks Dickerson, but now we're here at Centennial Airport and we're actually sitting in a 1998 Cessna Skyhawk that belongs to the Aspen Flying Club. And we're literally right across the runway from our second location, the Blue Sky Gallery. But you'll notice I have this fetching young woman, Hetty Carlson. She runs our teacher flight program. Um, Hetty, tell us about this kind of old school Skyhawk. I love the old school, by the way. It is kind of cool. It is. As you notice that there are analog steam gauges instead of our XTI G1000 glass cockpit. You know, if it was good enough for Lindbergh, <laughs> it's gotta be good enough for us. Exactly. <laughs> um, th the engine is also different. Um, this has a Lycoming 180 horsepower engine and it's a normally aspirated um, gas powered reciprocating engine. So. so the one we were just in was actually a turbo diesel. Correct. Which is great for up here because the turbo thinks it's at, you know, sea level Correct. all the time. Right. Whereas this poor guy, it's like, I'm at 6,800 feet already. Right, right. Yeah, that's exactly. not fun for a plane. Yeah. So, Hetty, did you know that Cessna has actually built 44,000 Skyhawks? That's amazing. That's a huge number. And what's even way crazier is the fact that America, 
China, any number of European countries are all scrambling for Skyhawks because they desperately need pilots. The need is great. In fact, Boeing estimates that in the next 18 years, we're going to need 2 million more aviation personnel. Mm. That includes pilots, air traffic control, maintenance, flight attendants even, and that's a worldwide number. That's nuts. You know, it gets me to thinking, how is Cessna going to keep up with demand? You know, since we are an air and space museum, we probably could, you know, fly there and knock on their door. Maybe. I say we take a little trip to Wichita and talk to the people that are actually building these planes and see what kind of information we can get. We aren't in Kansas anymore. Wait, oh, we are in Kansas anymore. Specifically, we're in Independence, Kansas which is home to the Independence Community College Pirates. Go Pirates! Great football team. But more importantly, bam, Cessna Manufacturing. How cool is that? And so we're gonna go see where the Cessna Skyhawk is made. That is some cool stuff. Let's go check it out. We're inside the production facility, and this is Paula Schabel, who's the GM here. As you can see behind us, there's a lot going on down on the floor here. So you guys produce what? So what we build out here is the 172, the 182, and the 206 single engine high wing. And then we also build the M2 jets and the 208, 208 the caravan line. All right, so this is literally only one building out of five. So as GM, you have a whole lot going on. You're kind of like the Henry Ford of Independence, Kansas, aren't you? I guess you could say that, yeah. That's very cool. So why did production move here to Independence? We were in Wichita. Why just kind of uproot and bring like one little slice down here? Well, so we started with the single engine uh, high wing aircraft. It was originally built uh, in Wichita, but in 1986, they did cease production. And our chairman at the time, Russ Meyer, said he would not bring those aircraft back until we had some product liability relief. So fortunate for us, in 1994, President Clinton signed a General Aviation Revitalization Act. It was, a, it was an act to help you guys produce more aircraft that obviously right. we desperately need. Right. So there had been an 18-year span in between that time. So of course, Wichita had picked up some other models. So at that time, they weren't able to produce a single engine high wing. So they had to look elsewhere uh, okay. for plants uh, to build those types of aircraft. Well, very and here cool. we are. Paula was kind enough to give us a tour of the assembly line where the 172 Skyhawk is being manufactured. All of this stuff is assembled by hand. There are no robots on the Skyhawk line. It's a perfect example of an American-made product. You look at everything and realize just how much goes into the production of this plane and how many hours it takes for the finished product to roll out the door. As each Skyhawk finishes up in the assembly building, it moves over to paint. Let's catch up with Paula to see the next step in the process. So when we bring the aircraft in from the assembly building, we bring it over to our sand and fill area and they'll wipe it plane down completely to remove all the excess dust, debris on that's on it. And then they'll start to mask the aircraft with paper, cover the windows to ensure okay. that when we go in to do the prime, the sanding, um, it doesn't get inside the aircraft. Um, and then from there, then we bring it out of the sand and fill booth um, and we bring it over into our paint booth over here. Okay. And that's when it receives its first top coat or base coat. You know, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that you don't just unwrap a Cessna 172 Skyhawk and it's immediately this beautiful thing that you've bought. There's a whole process of getting it to look like this. Right back there, we were literally putting on top coat, and then we were buffing and then hand painting rivets mm -hmm. where some of the buffing had taken the, the paint off. So tell us how we got from there to literally here. To finish off the paint detail after touching up on those rivets, we lay out the vinyl graphics on the aircraft. Okay. 
and then after that position we move into the engine install. So we start installing the engine, we start installing avionics, and then we also install the interior. Wow, and then obviously hooking everything up, mm -hmm. making sure everything kind of works. I noticed actually this guy's got a light on, mm -hmm. so we've got battery power to it, that yep. kind of thing. And so then from here, you're going to roll it out and test fly it, I assume. That's right. So it'll go into our flight hangar um, where we'll start uh, putting everything into service with the engine, putting fuel in the aircraft, okay. getting it ready for its first flight. This is a real plane. Yes, it is. I mean, we're, we've been everywhere, but this is the final, final destination as it was. And we are in the flight building. Yep. And so what happens here? that literally will get this guy out the door into a customer. So we just left our paint facility, and with that, we'll start putting our oil into our engines okay. and get our fuel into our wings, and then we'll take it outside the hangar here in the doors and run over to the, the airport and do a compass swing and do our engine runs, and then we'll bring it back into the facility and start getting it ready for our pilots okay. to get it released for first flight. So once a pilot gets a hold, one of a corporate pilot, an Cessna pilot gets this, They'll take it up and then they'll squawk it, come back and you'll do any little tweaks to that and yep. then literally to right onto the customer. In the same area right here, we'll do our, our squawks as well. Oh, okay. And then once that's those are completed and the pilots have bought off on it, then we bring in our ODAR inspectors and they inspect it one last time before we close it all up and it goes to the delivery center. That's So, I mean, you guys are really putting it under the microscope to make sure that it's ready for the customer. Yes, it goes through that's several inspections. Yeah, yes. that's probably a good thing. Well. Paula, thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. I mean, we've spent literally all day with you, and we have seen more than probably 99% of Skyhawk pilots will ever see, and we thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, but I think it's time that we do what we always do, and let's go fly. Right off the assembly line, a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. That's pretty cool. This is even cooler. Mindy Lindheim. She is going to be our demo pilot today. She is the regional sales director. Mindy, thank you so much. Of course, I'm happy this to be here. This is really cool. You got a cake gig, girl. I don't know about cake, but it is fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so cool. So tell us a little bit about how you got this job. Where did you come from? How did you become a pilot? I'm from Florida. I was originally interested in aerospace medicine, got to reading about pilots and how they can't take certain medicines. So the more I read about pilots, the more interested I was in that. So I talked to a neighbor who was a Delta pilot and he suggested to go on a discovery flight and I loved it. So oh, I that is so cool. went through school for it, got my rating, started flight instructing, and then I got picked up by Textron. That is Man, I cannot think of a better job, except maybe the job I have, because mm. this is pretty fun. <laughs> um, so earlier, we literally went through everything. We have seen how these things are built, and now we've got one right behind us. Can Absolutely. Would... I'd love to show you okay. around the Skyhawk. Let's start right here with the engine. So this is the Lycoming IO360. It's 180 horsepower, normally aspirated, so a little bit different than what you saw with the JTA. Right. This takes 100 low lead. Uh, it goes 124 knots is the max cruise speed at about 9 to 10 gallons per hour. Okay, all right, quick. Knots to miles per hour. 124 knots equals? About 145 miles per hour. Oh, all right, very cool. Well, then let's take this bad boy up. Let's do it. All right. I will say this, this is not what I had in mind when I thought of Kansas. Yeah, it's nice and green. It is. Portions of rolling hills. So there's a little bit of terrain out here. And you get to do this for a living. I get to do this for a living. I get to take up people like you that are interested in the aircraft, tell them all about it, show them all about it, take them flying, and hopefully they'll want to buy one. This is the most widely produced aircraft trainer. We've made, like you mentioned before, over 44,000 Skyhawks. And with that many Skyhawks out, there's so many people out there that are knowledgeable about how to work on them, how to fly oh, them. That's a good so point. it makes it a really safe aircraft in that aspect, too, just that there's so much information out there that you can find about the airplane. Um, same with the avionics, the engine, they're well proven avionic suites, and the Lycoming engine's been around for a long time, especially right. this model. It's a really easy, stable aircraft to fly, very forgiving, and it can take your first couple of hard landings. <laughs> Which I'm sure I will have. 
So this is the new G1000 NXI. You probably noticed how quickly it came on. It has a much yeah. faster processor, better resolution. It even identifies what frequency is active. So right now you can see it says KIDP Unicom. So we got Independence Unicom active. And that really helps so you don't pull up to the runway ready to go and let ground know that you're ready to take off when you're supposed to be on tower. So it can save you some from some embarrassing moments. <laughs> It sounds like you may have done that once or twice. Just once. Only once. <laughs> Super smart. It makes flying pretty easy. Of course, we have the moving map on the right side. You can have your flight plan in there, get airport weather information. We have radar on board. Uh, now, I also noticed it has Sirius XM. Yeah, so it has XM radio and weather. So Sirius wow. provides our weather service. That's our onboard weather radar that we have. And it looks just like you would have like on an app on your phone. You can see there's oh, some yeah. weather out here by Louisiana. And then there, it has all the same radio stations just like you do in your car. And whenever you or air traffic control starts talking, it'll automatically mute the radio so that you can listen in. It's amazing how much tour automobiles and aircraft are now starting to become, I mean, almost one and the same. Yeah, and, and on purpose, there's a, a lot of features in aircraft that they make kind of like cars so that you feel more comfortable and your family feels comfortable in it too so that they can see what's going on and read that you're only 30 minutes from your destination so that everyone's not so in the dark. Everyone right. can easily read and see what's going on. So we're just going to start slowing up, getting flaps in. We're going to start turning in here in just a second. Independence traffic, Skyhawk 6 Tango Alpha is turning left base 17 Independence. Alright, that was awesome. I love flying. I really love flying when Mindy is the pilot. <laughs> Thank Mindy, you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was really great. Um, I hate to do this, but we're going to leave you. Where are you going? Well, we're going back to Wichita. Which you guys are not going to want to miss because it is going to be well worth the trip. I'm here with Jay Robert, who is the uh, Director of Operations for Textron Aviation's East Campus. Jay, it's nice to have you here. So give me a real quick overview of what you do. So my responsibility is basically to make sure that the aircraft are built in the assembly lines when we need to build them. That's kind of a big job. Yes, it is. Wow. All right. Well, speaking of aircraft, can we go see some? Absolutely. Let's go. Woo! It's a big building. Yeah. So it's a little bit different than uh, Independence. What's going on here? So we got a lot of manufacturing going on, a lot of the King Air products. We also got the piston products that we'll see down line, and then we got the next generation coming with the Longitude. Ooh, I bet that's kind of cool. It's really exciting. A lot of new technology, uh, a different way of building an aircraft compared to what we've built in the past. I bet. So how exactly big is this building? So a little over 450,000 square feet that we actually have from manufacturing space. Whoa. Literally, it's kind of like independence. I mean, everybody has been here quite a while. They take pride in what they're doing. A huge heritage uh, within this business. A lot of people have a lot of passion around what they build. Right from the very beginning, there's a lot of generations that pass, you know, from mother and father down to their kid. It even dates back even to grandfather and grandmother wow. of who comes into this business and works. So yeah, I would say, you know, with Wichita, Kansas being the air capital of the world, uh, it's passed on with passion. You know, it's a very good uh, livelihood for anybody. Um, and it's, it's carried on throughout the generations. If you thought the facility in Independence was impressive, this place is enormous. Like the 172 Skyhawk, the aircraft here are mostly assembled by hand. Well, except for the Citation Longitude. That's Textron's super secret sauce. Jay was telling me that it's built with monolithic structures, has bonded metal technology instead of rivets, and they even designed it to be uber quiet with new soundproof tech. Talk about innovation coming out of Cessna. I guess they don't call Wichita the air capital of the world for nothing. This is an aircraft everyone has seen and everyone knows about. 
It's the most widely produced aircraft of all time, and we got to see it like no one else has before. From flying the 172 Skyhawk over downtown Denver, to going onto the production line in Independence, Kansas, and even seeing what Textron has in store for the future in Wichita, we've taken you behind the wings of the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. So, did you know that <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh -uh. <laughs> Denver. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the only one I swear. Better, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Jay, it's nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we set you up, man. <laughs> that was good. That was good.